Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today, we're going to be discussing Hogwarts and the four animal mascots that represent the Hogwarts house system. At Hogwarts, there are four houses, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw, and Hufflepuff. Houses created by the original four founders of Hogwarts, Godric, Salazar, Rowena, and Helga. Why four houses? Well, put as simply as possible, there were four founders, and each founder wanted to teach the students in their own way. Dividing the students accordingly seemed like the best course of action. Each of the four houses created by the school's founders can be represented in a number of different ways. The first and most obvious identifier of a Hogwarts house is the use of their signature colors. Slytherin can be identified by green and silver, Hufflepuff by yellow and black, Ravenclaw by blue and bronze, blue and silver in the movies, and Gryffindor by red and gold. These colors can be found plastered all over the common rooms and uniforms of the respective houses. But that's not the only way to identify a Hogwarts house. The cornerstones of the Hogwarts house system, and perhaps the most iconic symbols associated with each house, are the house mascots. For Gryffindor, this mascot was a lion, for Slytherin, a serpent, for Hufflepuff, a badger, and for Ravenclaw, an eagle, or raven in the films. But what do these creatures have to do with anything? What connection do they have to the founders? And how did these seemingly mundane creatures, at least looking at it from the perspective of a magical world, get chosen as representatives for these houses? I've got nothing against lions, serpents, badgers, or eagles, but in a world filled with things like dragons, acromantulas, thestrals, and noondoos, these creatures seem less impressive. I'm going to start with why these creatures were chosen, and then move on to why magical creatures weren't chosen. The Lion When it comes to the Hogwarts house animals, it's important that we look beyond their physical stature, and instead shift our focus to the symbolism associated with these different animals. To begin, let's kick things off with the lion, Gryffindor's mascot, a king in our own animal kingdom, and a creature that is unquestionably symbolic on a vast number of levels. The Sorting Hat had this to say of Gryffindor House. You might belong in Gryffindor, where dwell the brave of heart. Their daring, nerve, and chivalry set Gryffindors apart. Bravery and chivalry, those are two of the most prominent features of Gryffindor House, and it just so happens that lions symbolize these two traits perfectly. Bravery is, in my opinion, the standout quality of Gryffindor students, as we've seen some of the most hesitant witches and wizards, like Ron Weasley and Neville Longbottom, muster up their courage and stand in the face of Lord Voldemort. And if we look at the element of chivalry, it seems only natural that the King of Beasts and King of the Muggle Animal Kingdom would be a suitable choice for a house that radiates royalty. Gryffindor's also the ruling house in the series due to its connection with the main protagonists, and even its house colors of red and gold signify royalty. But what else do lions represent? Justice. In Mesopotamian mythology, Samus, also known as the Lion Man or God of Justice, allows King Etna to free an eagle who has been trapped by a serpent. In this example, we can see that even before Harry Potter, the lion, eagle, and serpent, all animals representing Hogwarts houses, have a shared history. The lion against the serpent is a common theme in folklore that is repeated once again in Harry Potter, pitting Gryffindor against Slytherin. The Serpent Moving on from the lion, we're going to discuss its nemesis, the serpent. Or perhaps in Slytherin, you'll make your real friends, those cunning folk use any means to achieve their ends. The general theme in Harry Potter is that Slytherins are conniving, ambitious, and willing to do whatever it takes to succeed, even if that means stepping on a few toes along the way. Slytherins are also incredibly cunning, and often, able to manipulate others and to get what they want. These attributes can all be seen in their house mascot, the snake, which has long been identified with acts of ambition and cunning. In nature, snakes show ambition by going after prey much larger than them, and they show their cunning by using clever tactics to trick, confuse their prey, like via camouflage. 
An early tale outlining the snake's propensity to deceive is in the story of Adam and Eve, where the snake was able to convince Eve to give in to temptation and to pick fruit from the tree. However, the biggest reason for Salazar Slytherin choosing this house mascot was undoubtedly his unique connection to snakes. For you see, Salazar Slytherin was a parcel mouth, a wizard that had the innate ability to talk to snakes. It seems only fitting that he should dedicate his house to the creature he closely resonated with, the badger. Next up, we've got the badger, the mascot of House Hufflepuff. You might belong in Hufflepuff, where they are just and loyal. Those patient Hufflepuffs are true and unafraid of toil. Hufflepuff is similar to Gryffindor in that they both value justice and aren't afraid to show a bit of bravery, but one of the big differences is that they're a little more reserved in their approach. The badger, though fierce and powerful, has quite a reserved disposition, commonly leading a quiet life and not revealing its true ferocity until provoked. In some ways, this reflects the way that the other three Hogwarts houses view Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff is commonly written off, a joke, an afterthought, but in truth they were the second most represented house during the Battle of Hogwarts and have achieved more than their fair share of success. Badgers are quite common in children's literature, playing prominent roles in stories like The Wind in the Willows and The Animals of Farthing Wood. In these tales, each of these badgers perfectly exemplify what it is to be a Hufflepuff. In The Wind in the Willows, Badger shows incredible loyalty to his friends, no matter how much they test his patience. And in The Animals of Farthing Wood, the Badger reveals its nurturing, caring nature, and traits we know to be consistent with the house founder, Helga. The Eagle First, let's address the elephant or raven in the room. Ravenclaw's house mascot is not a raven, it's an eagle. You may be able to find all sorts of Ravenclaw merchandise online with a raven on it, but in truth, Ravenclaw's mascot was only changed for the films. In the books, which are true canon, Ravenclaw House is represented by an eagle, as well as the colors blue and bronze, rather than blue and silver. Or yet in Wise Old Ravenclaw, if you've already mined, where those of wit and learning will always find their kind. The overarching character trait associated with Ravenclaw is undoubtedly intelligence or wisdom, and in this regard they couldn't have picked a better mascot. The eagle, while also a symbol of strength and immortality, is deeply rooted as a symbol for intelligence, wit, and high spirit. This is reflected in the Ravenclaw student welcome message. Our emblem is the eagle, which soars where others cannot climb. And if we look at the prevalence of eagles in myth, we can find even more evidence that eagles are synonymous with wisdom. In Mesopotamian folklore, the eagle is double-headed, representing its ability to see in both directions at the same time and emphasizing its association with wisdom. Doesn't get much clearer than that. With the above explanations, hopefully I've provided you with a better idea of why these muggle animals were chosen to represent each house in lieu of magical creatures. Ilvermorny may have houses named after magical beasts, but that school was founded by different people in a different part of the world in a different era. Thunderbirds, Wampus Cats, Horned Serpents, and Puck Wudgies are impressive, and they seem to work well as house mascots, but these creatures were also chosen fairly arbitrarily. When Ilvermorny was formed, the founders simply chose their favorite magical beasts to represent the houses, and didn't make their decisions based on any kind of deeper connection. In this way, I think that the Hogwarts houses are a lot more special. Furthering this, the houses at Ilvermorny are looked at as pieces of a whole, where Hogwarts houses have entirely their own identities, existing independently from one another. It is sometimes said of the Ilvermorny houses that they represent the whole witch or wizard. The mind is represented by Horned Serpent, the body, Wampus, the heart, Puckwudgie, and the soul, Thunderbird. In essence, the only reason that magical creatures weren't chosen was because they weren't necessary. They could have chosen more impressive creatures, sure, but the choices made by the original four founders of Hogwarts were made for a reason. We also have to remember that Hogwarts was founded before the International Statute of Secrecy had been put in place, meaning that muggles and magic folk coexisted. 
During this time, due to exposure to the muggle world, these muggle creatures could have become near and dear to the founders. And one last theory to close off this video, since this is Harry Potter theory, is that the animals associated with each house were representative of the Hogwarts founders' Patronus animals. According to Harry Potter lore, the animal shape of the Patronus is determined by the personality of the caster, and based on this, we can safely assume that the characteristics that this person displays are characteristics that they share in common with that animal. The only issue with this theory is that I'm not sure whether Salazar Slytherin would have been able to produce a Patronus. And that's it for this video. Did you ever ask yourself these questions? Got any more for me? Leave a comment down below. As always, if you enjoy the content, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.